Angelo Santana. There's some beautiful artwork in here. I'd like for you to check this out and take a look at it. When Angels Sing. And this is um, a really cool drawing and it's just kind of depicting the kind of audience that Carlos Santana was able to draw in his lifetime. And he's like over the top amazing. When you were born, your tia abuela called you El Cristalino, the crystal one. She thought the light of angels shined through you. Your father wanted to name you Geronimo after the brave Apache freedom fighter. He was proud of his mestizo blood. But your mother, as always, had the final word, and your name was Carlos. And he was born in 1947. Your father, like your grandfather before him, was a traveling musician. You missed him when he went away. You missed the soapy smell of maha on his skin and the smile in his eyes. But most of all, you missed the sound of his violin. When he was home, people would crowd the square to hear him play. And it was a sound that filled the world with magic and love and feeling and healing. And it was a sound that made angels real. And you wanted to make angels real too. So this is what he, he felt like when he was watching his father when he was a child. First you tried the clarinet, but the buzzy reed was too fussy for your nose. And then you tried el cornejo, your grandfather's instrument, but the taste of brass was too bitter on your lips. Finally, you tried el violin. You scratched and squeaked and practiced so hard your tears stained its wood, but it would not sing for you, not like it sang for your father. There were no angels when you played, not yet at least. When I am good enough, they will come, you thought. To you, life in Atlan de Navarro was Escondidas hide-and-seek played beneath the mesquite trees with your brothers and sisters. It was the plop-plop of red ripe mango, it was the crew-crew of a chicalaca bird, and the bubble boil of pasole on the stove. On special days, it was biznagas, sweets made from cactus, and alfajor, a kind of cookie made with dulce de leche. But life without running water and electricity was hard, and when the nibble sting of the chinches and the pulgas became too much, your mother sold everything and took you to Tijuana. Tijuana wasn't much better. Sure, there were fresh tamales and chili rellenos and the orange, orangey pipian and chocolate-like mole, but Colonia Libertad was still the ghetto, and you were still so poor. Soon you were dressed like a charo playing two violin for 50 cents a song. La cucaracha, besame mucho, they said. Tourist music, you thought. But it was a way to make money, so your father forced you to learn more songs. Mozart, Brahms, polkas, boleros, gypsy music. You must put your heart into it, he said. You could not. This is not the music my angels want to hear, you thought. This is why they do not sing for me. Your mother knew you loved music even though you hated the violin. One day, she took you to Palacio de Municipal Park with its bustling walkways and charming carts. Chiming carts, sorry. You had heard the blues before, but you had never seen how the music was made. You had never seen someone play la guitarra, at least not like this. The hair on your arm stood up. An angel's breath, you thought? So he's liking it. He's liking the way they're playing. Your father was away as usual, but your mother sent him a letter, and after saving enough money, he sent home una guitarra, and it was battered and bruised, 
and it was beautiful and it was mailed to Carlos Santana, Tijuana, Baja, California. You found old radio, an old radio and took your guitar and played along in the storage room in the dark because that was the only quiet place in the house. You closed your eyes and you let your ears lead the way and you taught yourself to follow the plunk of El Piano and the bounce of El Bajo and the sway of El Saxophone and most importantly, the groove of La Guitarra. You collected the ingredients and marinated your soul in them and learned that playing the blues was not about the color of your skin or which parts of town you came from. It was about feeling the music. You did not put your heart into it like your father had said. Instead, you let the music put its heart into you. Your family moved again. You liked your new house in San Francisco. But riding the bus and going to school and making friends was hard, especially because you didn't speak English. They said, car antenna? And you said, no, car, los, Santana. And they called you a chili bean eater and they gave you tests that you couldn't read and held you back a year because they thought that you were dumb. So you ran away all the way back to Tijuana, just, just you and your guitar. My angels will come, you thought, and they will tell me I'm good enough. And you watched TV and you improved your English and you learned how to respect a song and its melody. But no angels came and you started to wonder if they ever would. And still, when your family came to find you, you did not want to go home. San Francisco was a mess of music, just like the jukebox at TikTok Burgers where you worked. You washed pots and mopped floors and started a blues band and listened to Willie Bobo and the Beatles and B.B. King and while the smell of Clorox burned in your nostrils and tried to bleach your soul white, but you wouldn't let it. Just like your father, you were proud of your misty soul blood. Like your brother, or your brother was living in the Central Valley. That's up by us. We live in the Central Valley. He was a campesino working the fields. Like so many migrant workers, he suffered under the cruel gear crush of ex exploitation until Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta started fighting back. Si se puede, they said. Yes, we can. This helped your brother, and even though you weren't there, it helped you too, deep in your soul. They can do it, I can, you thought. So you kept playing and you kept practicing and practicing and searching for your sound. And one day you went to Aquatic Park. Los Congas rumbled into your chest. There was magic in their beat, a breath, a breeze, a feeling, the breaking dawn of something in the world, something that the world had never seen before. And this too, Tuma Taka Taka Tak, to Tuma Taka Taka Tak, was the beat of its heart. So here's, you know, he's at the park and then he hears these guys with the drums. And he's just totally enchanted because he's thinking, wow, this is a beat, I understand this. I feel this. Maybe this is the music that will make my angels sing, you thought. So you took the soul of the blues and the brains of jazz and the energy of rock and roll. And to that, you added the slow heat of Afro-Cuban drums and the cilantro-scented sway of the music you'd grown up with. There were a lot of bands in San Francisco, but none were playing music like that. There was something electric in the air and its name was the Santana Blues Band. Soon everyone knew who you were. Everyone came to see you, everyone except your angels. Will I ever be good enough, you wondered? 
You were getting too old to believe in angels anyway. All around you, the nurturing light of possibility was beginning to glow. Martin Luther King Jr. was changing the world, and the young people like you were too. Taking your, you were taking your hearts and coloring them open and making the world a better place. And then the light was gone. He was gone. In the background, the bombs of Vietnam grew louder and louder, and suddenly it was as if hate and fear had covered the world in darkness. But you knew music was a light. You'd seen the soul sound of your father's bring joy and hope. Your, your father's violin bring joy and hope, and you had seen it heal. So you kept playing, even through, even though hate and fear were telling you and your young, young people like you that you didn't belong, even though you didn't think you were good enough, even though there were still no angels, Carlos Santana played on. The Santana Blues Band was big in San Francisco, but there in New York, at the Muddy Wood, muddy Woodstock Music Festival, you were unknown, unsteady, and kind of scared. But on that day, in front of more than 400,000 people, you didn't know you took the stage anyway. You looked out into the audience, hoping for a miracle, hoping for something to tell you that you were good enough, hoping you had been wrong to stop believing in angels. But there were no angels out there. There had never been angels out there. And suddenly, you knew why. You took the stage, and you stopped looking out, and you started looking in. And at last, you heard your angels sing. was inside of him. There's the real Carlos Santana today. On the heels of his career-making performance at Woodstock, Carlos Santana became an international music star. Before world music was even a genre, Santana pioneered a unique sound that fused American blues, rock, and jazz traditions with the sound and feel of Latin American and African music. Santana's band, like his music, was always multicultural. And that, that is the end of this story and the end of this magnificent book about this magnificent musician. And I bet you if you ask your parents or even your grandparents to play one of their favorite songs, I bet you they know exactly what it is. So, that was a little piece of rock history and consider that your library skills for this time. And this book is a biography, so you will find it in the biography section under B and then M-A-H for the three letters, the first three letters of the author's last name. So long.